What's up guys, Larry Newport here. It's been a while since I made a video. But a lot of stuff is coming together and I had to make something. I'm going to start off here. So this is going to be a kind of a Bible study and kind of a study on current events. Because the Bible study is a... <laughs> Is the current events. Alright, so I'm gonna start I'm gonna start here in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter nine. I'm gonna start in verse twenty-four. Um and this is actually the prophecy that uh foretold the date of the coming of the Messiah of Jesus. Alright, so uh, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and, and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for, for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. And this is, uh, this is given to, to uh, the prophet Daniel. The angel uh, Gabriel is given given him this message. The same angel that uh, appeared to Mary and uh, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. All right. So this so that's who's uh, speaking to Daniel here. The angel Gabriel. So are you so you are to know and discern from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and sixty two weeks. And it will be built again with the plaza and moat even in times of distress. All right, so this is a. Uh, this isn't speaking of uh, weeks, literally, but uh, weeks, not weeks of days, but weeks of years. So, the seven weeks that represents forty-nine years, and sixty-two weeks that represents, together they represent uh, like it's four four hundred thirty-four years. Together they represent four hundred eighty-three years. It says uh. It will be built again with the plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then after after the 62 weeks, see the 7 weeks was first. And in the 49 years following this decree, uh, the temple was rebuilt in Jerusalem. And then after the 62 weeks following, so after 69 total weeks of years, 483 years, It says, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. So, uh, that's speaking of Jesus being killed. The Messiah will be cut off. And it says, and the people of the prince who is uh, to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. And a lot of this other stuff right here is end time stuff. Desolations, desolations are determined. Now, if we go back up to uh, the beginning here, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people. Um, so, 69 so far. The last seven weeks, the last uh, last week, the last seven years. We're about to go into right now, the last seven years of human history. So then after 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the princes who the of the prince who is to come, speaking of the Antichrist, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And it says, and he will make a firm coven, covenant with many for one week. 
firm covenant with many for one week. That's the seven years. Um, and it, it, we go over here. Uh, we actually have the decree uh, from Artaxerxes to the prophet Ezra. Uh, to the priest, scribe, and prophet Ezra. It says, now this is the copy of the decree, which, uh, and right up here we see, uh, it was in the seventh year of the king, which is 457 BC. And, uh, and here's the actual decree. I'm not going to read it out right now. But that's the, the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And uh, so you go forth um, 483 years. It's like uh, 26 AD or something. Uh, it's, it's right uh, when when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a, on a donkey. Um Predicted that perfectly. But, um, so this covenant for one week, I believe that is the peace deal that's been in the works for the last few years. And I believe that is what, uh, sets off. The end times. And I'm going to go through it. But the time is short. Netanyahu says Trump peace plan will be, re re be released immediately after elections. On the 17th, that's about five, six days away. As a matter of fact, uh, let's see exactly six days and three hours as I'm recording this. We also have this verse, First Thessalonians five three, for when they shall say peace and safety, and sudden destruction comes upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, as labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. So I believe uh, this peace deal is what sets everything off. I believe this is what starts. The last seven years, the last, the 70th week of Daniel. Now with this peace deal, they're uh, talking about dividing the land of Israel, or dividing uh, Jerusalem at least. And I believe Isaiah 24 right here. See, see, this is a uh, part of what's coming upon the earth. So let me read through this. Uh, Isaiah twenty-four. Behold, the Lord lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and scatters its inhabitants. And the people will be like the priest. The servant like the master, the maid like her mistress, the buyer like the seller. In other words, everyone on that day will be the same. Don't matter what kind of uh, fame you have or what kind of money you have. That day, everyone's the same. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers. The world fades and withers. 
the exalted of the people of the earth fade away. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they transgressed laws, violated statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth. Broke the everlasting covenant. I believe that's the uh, covenant right here. With Abraham, I mean, well, the co covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but this is the covenant right here with Jacob. Um, I'm gonna read through a little bit, a little bit of this real, real quick. Uh, and Jacob departed from Beersheba, and this is uh, out of Genesis 28, and went toward Haran. He came in a certain place and spent the night there, because the sun is set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head. And lay down in that place. He had a dream. And behold. A ladder was set on the earth. With its top reaching to heaven. And behold the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold the Lord stood above it and said. I am. <laughs> I am Yah. The God of your father Abraham. And the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie. I will give it to you and to your descendants. So right there, God made a covenant with Jacob to give that land, the land of Israel, and beyond to their descendants. And and one more th and uh. Also about um, the scripture right here. It says he had a dream. In Jacob's ladder. It said a ladder reaching to heaven. And behold the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then we go over here. <clears throat> John 1. Uh, Nathaniel. Um, says Nathaniel said to him how do you know me Jesus answered and said to him before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree I saw you Nathaniel answered him Rabbi Master you were the son of God you were the king of Israel and Jesus answered and said to him because I said said to you that I saw you under the fig tree do you believe you will see greater things than these and he said to him Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Son of Man is himself, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the ladder. He's Jacob's ladder. He's the ladder to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. What about, uh, so I believe what's spoken of here in Isaiah, Isaiah 24, broke the everlasting covenant. I believe that's speaking of dividing the land of Israel, dividing, um, breaking the covenant that God made there with Jacob. It says, therefore, Broke the everlasting covenant, therefore a curse devours the earth. And we also have right here in Job 3, I mean in uh, Joel 3, it says, For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, which he uh, did in 1948 and uh, 1967, uh, Israel took back Jerusalem. Judah is, uh, that's the Jews. 
And um, it says, I will gather all the nations and I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will, then I will enter into judgment with them there. On behalf of my people and my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. And they have divided up my land. There you go. See, Israel has been taken over before. They've been uh, scattered, like some of them scattered into the nations, like uh, they've been taken into captivity before. And even were out of the land for the last like 2,000 years. But it says, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. And it says, and they have divided up my land. And about um, about Jerusalem, Second Chronicles six six, God said, "But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there." And also, in Second Chronicles thirty three four, it says, "He built altars in the house of the Lord." Of which the Lord said, My name shall be in Jerusalem forever. But this peace deal It looks like they're gonna be dividing up the land of Israel. There was a leak of the peace plan in uh, May of this year. And according to the leak, uh, there's going to be West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which is Israel's land. And then if we go down here, it says Jerusalem would be a shared capital where Israelis could not purchase Palestinian homes and vice versa. Be a shared capital. It's put in Jerusalem. But to go back to uh, Isaiah twenty four. Go down to verse 16. But I say, woe to me, woe to me. Alas for me. The treacherous deal treacherously. <laughs> and the treacherous deal very treacherously. And based on uh, some other scriptures, I feel like the treacherous dealer um, I think my uh, my brother James Smith is right in this uh, fact. I believe the treacherous dealer is also the seventh king of Revelation. And I believe that's Donald Trump, the king of Babylon. But I'm going to read the rest of this chapter. This is what's coming upon this earth very soon. Y'all need to wake up and turn to Christ. Uh, it's not really not a lot, not a lot of time left. Maybe uh, only like a week. They're talking about releasing this peace deal as soon as uh, right after the elections, immediately. And I believe this is what sets it off. I believe that's Daniel's uh, that covenant. The covenant. Made with me for one week. But I got uh, a little bit more to cover. So about the treacherous one. This is a prophecy about Babylon. This is Isaiah uh, 33. Woe to you, O destroyer. 
while you were not destroyed, and he who is treacherous, while others did not deal treacherously with him. As soon as you finish destroying, you will be destroyed. As soon as you cease to deal treacherously, others will deal treacherously with you. O Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their strength every morning, our salvation also in the time of distress. At the, soon, at the sound of the tumult, people flee. At the lifting up of yourself, when God stands up, nations disperse. Your spoil is gathered as the caterpillar gathers, as locusts rushing about. As look at rushing about, men rush up about on it. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. Literally. <laughs> he has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And it is about Babylon. <clears throat> Behold their brave men cry in the streets. The ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. Who are the ambassadors of peace? Wouldn't that be uh, Jared Kushner? Uh, Jason Greenblatt, but he just uh, dropped out of it. The highways are desolate. The traveler has ceased. He has broken the covenant and who who was he? Who was he? We go up here. He He who is treacherous, the treacherous dealer. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. The treacherous dealer. He has broken the covenant. Wow. Donald Trump. <laughs> I really believe this is speaking about uh Donald Trump right now. The treacherous dealer, he has broken the covenant, he has despised the cities, he has no regard for man. The land mourns and pines away, Lebanon is shamed and withers, Sharon is like a desert plain, and Bashan and Carmel lose their foliage. Now I will arise, says the Lord. So when the Lord stands up and that's when everything happens. When he has broken the covenant, now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now I will be lifted up. You have conceived chaff. You will give birth to stubble. My breath will consume you like fire. The peoples will be burned to lime, like cut thorns which are burned in the fire. Then we have over here what happens. The same thing. Look. Um, this is a vision that David saw. Then the earth shook and quaked. And the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went out of his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Right here. My breath will consume you like a fire. The peoples will be burned alive. Like cut thorns which are burned in the fire. But this right here. This, this is uh, Psalm 18. This is the picture of Jesus coming in the clouds. Then the earth shook and quaked. And the foundations of the mountain, mountains were trembling. And were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, with thick darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew, and he sped upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him past thick clouds, he's coming down with bright, 
darkness underneath him, you know, dark clouds underneath him, hiding his brightness. From the brightness before him past his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire, and that's the same hailstones and coals of fire in, um, in Revelation, the same hailstones and coals of fire I'm about to read here in Ezekiel 38 here in a second. He sent out his arrows and scattered them, and lightning flashes in abundance and routed them. Then the channels of the water appeared, and the, and the foundations of the world were laid bare <laughs> at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Now here's a resurrection and the rapture. He sent from on high, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. Waters represent people. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my state. Yah was my state. He brought me forth also into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Now here's the same thing in Ezekiel 38. Thus says the Lord God, Are you the one of whom I spoke in former days through my prophets of Israel who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them? There we go. It will come about on that day when God comes up against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God. That my fury will mount up in my anger. Now just to bring it back. What is what is going on right here? Surrounding nations. Um, many people believe uh, Russia. Definitely Turkey, Iran. Ethiopia, Libya. Other nations. Are going to try to completely wipe Israel off the map, and that's and that's when Jesus comes back on the clouds. So when they try to come wipe out Israel, the same day Babylon is destroyed, from my understanding. But when they try to come wipe out Israel too. That's when Yeshua, Jesus Christ, comes on the clouds and defends them personally with hailstones and coals of fire. Now let me read the rest of this. It will come about on that day when God comes up against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, that my fury will mount up in my anger, in my zeal and in my blazing wrath, I declare that on that day, there will surely be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth will shake at my presence. The mountains will also be thrown down. The steep pathways will collapse and every wall will fall to the ground. Every wall. And that's the same thing that's in Revelation 6. With the sixth seal. It says, uh, Every man's sword will be, will be against his brother. And if you if you look back at uh look back in the in the Bible, there's different times when uh when God did that. There's even uh, I think there was even a story from uh, 1967 Six Day War or uh, 1948 War or something was something like that, and <laughs> people turning on each other, like going crazy or something, but. It says every man's sword will be against his brother, and which is interesting because there's a uh, 
There's the Sunni Muslims and the Shiite Muslims, and neither of them get along. So if they're all if they all come, <laughs> they're all coming across the mountains of Israel to attack Israel. God may just turn them against each other. I mean, and and He will. That's what the Bible says. It says, with pestilence and with blood, I will enter into judgment with him. And I will rain on him and on his troops and on many peoples who are with him. A torrential rain with hailstones, fire and brimstone. That's the same fire. That's the same hail and brimstone. Hail and coals of fire that are mentioned in Psalm 18. I will magnify myself, sanctify myself, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they will know that I am the Lord. Now here's another uh, scripture about the treacherous dealer. Another scripture about uh, Babylon. This is Isaiah 21. The oracle concerning the wilderness of the sea. As wind storms in the Negev sweep, sweep on. It comes from the wilderness. From a terrifying land. A harsh bit vision has been shown to me. This is uh, Isaiah talking about the vision. He, he was just shown. A harsh vision has been shown to me. And here's the vision. The treacherous, the treacherous one. Still deals treacherously. And its destroyer. Still destroys. Who was the destroyer of this world? Who is the dominant nation in this world? Who is the bully on the block? My gosh. It can only be one nation. It says. Go up Elam. Lay siege, Medea. Elam. I believe that's Iraq. If I believe that's Iraq. Uh, Medea. That's Iran. It says, I have made an end to all the groaning she has caused. Who? Babylon. Which I, I can't see Babylon being any other nation than America. Unless there's multiple Babylons. And there's multiple scriptures. There's tons of stuff in the Bible with multiple fulfillments. So it's a possibility. But the United States is the only place or thing in this world. That can fully fit every description of Mystery Babylon or, or Babylon the Great. It says, I have made an end to all the groaning she has caused. For this, for this reason my loins are full of anguish. Pains have seized me like the pains of a woman in labor. It's a woman in labor again. Which uh, I may make a video on. I am so bewildered I cannot hear. So terrified I cannot see. <sighs> this is how crazy it's going to be. This is how bad it's going to be. Turn to Jesus Christ. Repent. Turn to God. Ain't no time. Ain't no time. The time really may be this short. This. Oh my gosh. This says I am so bewildered I cannot hear. So terrified I cannot see. My mind reels. Horror overwhelms me. This is what's coming upon this earth. To every single person. That isn't caught up. Away from this trouble. The twilight I long for has been turned for me into trembling. They set the table, they spread out the cloth, they eat, they drink. Rise up, captains, oil the shields. For thus says the Lord, or 
For thus the Lord says to me, Go station the lookout. Let him report what he sees. And this actually uh, reminds me of another scripture. I think in uh, Zechariah, it says, uh, When he sees riders, horsemen and pairs, a train of donkeys, a train of camels, let him play a let him pay close attention, very close attention. It says, Then the lookout called, O Lord, I stand continually by day on the watchtower. And this is what uh, a lot of us believers who are seeing these end time prophecies come together, seeing all this stuff coming coming together, are doing. We're, we're standing continually by day on the watchtower, stationed every night at the guard post, because that's what uh, that's what our king told us to do. says, Now behold, here comes a troop of riders, horsemen and pairs. And one said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon. And all the images of her gods are shattered on the ground. O my threshed people, and the afflicted of my threshing floor. God of Israel, I make known to you. It says, fallen, fallen is Babylon. We go over to Revelation 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. And the earth was illumined with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, fallen, fallen on the great. You know, the time's coming. Whether this is it now or not, you know, I really can't see what el what else this peace deal would be except this covenant. It lines up with all these scriptures. We've been given time. The seventeenth is the <laughs> is the Israeli elections at six days away. Maybe five by the time I drop this. We're talking about releasing this peace deal immediately after. Along with that, September 23rd is the two-year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign. If y'all remember in uh, 2017, we had that solar eclipse that went across America. And um, it actually crossed across seven cities called Salem. And that's where the name Jerusalem comes from. And then, less than a month later, we had this once-in-a-lifetime sign in the sky. If you read Revelation 12, verses 1 and 2, that was literally fulfilled in the sky, in the stars, in the sun, moon, and stars. For the first time, I believe, ever, ever my first time ever, I believe, uh, besides possibly around... The time of the birth of Jesus, or possibly, uh, I heard possibly around the time of creation, like the creation of Adam, like 4,000 years ago. But other than that, uh, never happened. And uh, it was prophesied to happen. And I know, uh, I know, I know y'all have seen the signs. Whether it's the signs in the skies, the eclipses, we've had multiple eclipses of um, solar and lunar eclipses.
plus just the state of the world. I, I know y'all got to see where this world is going, how bad it's getting, how crazy it's getting. It's unbelievable. It's not, it's not an accident how wicked and how crazy and wicked this, this world is getting that fast. But we're, uh, we just uh, ended the 70th year. We're in the 71st year of Israel being a nation again. You know, Jesus said, uh, This generation shall not pass until all things are fulfilled. I believe that generation he was speaking of is this end time generation that began in 1948. And the Bible says a generation, well in Psalm 90 it says, The years of a man are 70 years, but if by strength, 80. But if so, they're full of uh, toil and sorrow. And then, it, and then it actually says, and then we fly away. But we're in the 71st year. And if there's going to be a seven-year tribulation, there's definitely not a lot of time left. But along with that, along with uh, the two-year anniversary, two, year, two years from that Revelation 12 sign, which is definitely some, which was definitely something major. So also on um, on the twenty fifth through the twenty seventh, I'm gonna read this. Uh, this is an article from September second, a few days ago. It says on September twenty fifth, the five thousand seven hundred eightieth anniversary of the day on which Jewish tradition holds the world was created. The Sanhedrin is hosting a conference for the emerging organization of 70 nations. The conference will culminate in an animal sacrifice made by representatives of the nations on the Mount of Olives. You know, that's where Jesus had his uh, most fam famous sermon on the Mount of Olives in which they will renew the covenant made by Noah upon leaving the ark. Now God made a covenant with Noah saying I will I will never flood the uh I will never flood the earth or I will never destroy the earth again with water. And gave the sign of the sign of the rainbow as a mark of that covenant. But for some reason these Jews um the Jewish re religious leaders of the Sanhedrin believe they can believe they have the authority to renew a covenant that God made. And they're going to do an animal sacrifice. And on top of that, they think their sacrifice is going to cancel out the war of Gog, Magog, Gog and Magog, which I read in Ezekiel 38, which is going to come to pass. <clears throat> but look at this. They think they're respecting God. Look at this. Look at this picture. That's a pallet they're burning to offer a sacrifice to God. Unreal. But, uh, says the conference will begin on Wednesday evening, September 25th, the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Elul, at the Jerusalem Gate Hotel, and continue until Friday, September 27th. Lectures and discussions will focus on the Noahide obligations incumbent upon all of mankind, the Noahide laws. Which make belief in faith and serving Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, illegal, punishable by death, by breaking the commandment of adultery under Noahide laws. 
And it's also illegal to keep the Sabbath for a Gentile, according to them, to what they consider Gentiles, to keep the Sabbath. And I believe that's punishable by death also. But it says, uh, lectures and discussions will focus on the Noahide ob obligations incumbent, incumbent upon all mankind. Also discussed will be the universal economic, cultural, educational that should be the focus of such an organization. A major focus will also be the establishment of an international court based on Bible principles, their interpretation of the Bible. God established the borders of the world based on 70, the 70 children of Israel who went down to Egypt and the 70 nations that came, out, that came out from Noah. The concept of the 70 nations also appears in reference to the 70 oxen offered in a temple throughout Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, which the Talmud teaches are, the, are for the merit of the 70 nations. See, the Talmud that's a Jewish man-made law. That's the traditions of the elders that Jesus spoke against when he was here. And they're doing the same thing. So as much of the conference will be dedicated to the seven principles incumbent upon all mankind given to Noah after the biblical flood. A lecture on the subject will be given by the chairman of Brit Olam, Noahide World Center, Rabbi Ori Kerik, Cherkai, Rabbi Hollander, who also sits at the board of the Brit Olam organization, is convinced that universal adherence to the Noahide laws is necessary for the existence of civilization. No. Besides uh, the whole Noahide law thing and how that could... <laughs> The mark of the beast could be, uh, I mean, they're about to make it illegal to, uh, to serve Jesus, you know? I mean, the time's coming, and the time may be really short. All this stuff is coming together, um, in addition to that, like, they're trying to, trying to move the world court to Jerusalem now. You know, so the, the surrounding Arab nations are not going to be down with any of this at all. They're already not down with the peace deal. They're not down, they're definitely not going to be down with the 70 nation coalition thing, world government thing formed out of Jerusalem. In addition to that, today Netanyahu said if he's elected next week, He's going to annex all the West Bank, and that's where a lot of the Palestinians live. Just more and more, more pieces of the, pieces of the puzzle. Um, I really think this uh, peace deal is what sets everything off, what starts the end times. I believe when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon the whole world. And if you're not right with God... You're a part of that sudden destruction. That sudden destruction is coming down upon you. So turn to Jesus Christ now. Turn to Yeshua HaMashiach. The only way to eternal life. The only way to salvation. The time is short. The King is coming. Jesus is coming back in the clouds. And destruction is coming down with them. Along with the devil and his angels. Being cast down. Bible says the worst time in human history, and that includes the flood of the whole earth.
Time is short. Be ready. If you are a believer, make sure you got oil in your lamp. Make sure you're living for God. Make sure you're on fire for God. Be ready. Repent. 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 The letters of the seven churches say repent. Repent. Turn back to him. Pray. You're found worthy to escape the things coming upon this world. <laughs> it ain't nothing nice. It's only a matter of time. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, give your life to him now. It might be your last chance. On this day of destruction, a quarter of the world dies. And potentially... All of the United States. So your only time. <laughs> Maybe now. Turn to Jesus Christ. To save you and give you eternal life. It's your choice. It's either that or death. Permanent death of both body and soul in the lake of fire. I love y'all. God bless y'all. Be ready.